Okay, that's a good left. You're looking at the newest breed of drivers. The Locust. I don't know why I can't yeah. do it sometimes, and it doesn't come other time. Dr. Jeff Dawson and his team at Carleton University built a motorized car to study locust flight without having to restrain the insects. If you restrain an insect while you're studying it, it doesn't behave naturally. And so by developing this vehicle, this car, we're actually al allowing the insect to be in control of its own motion and its own movement while still allowing us to actually record data from it. The car runs using electric impulses from the beating of the locust's wings. So we see we have a, a migrating African locust. And what we have here is electrodes placed inside the muscles that are attached to the wings. Now the wings here, when they f obviously see the decompress and depress. So this causes electrical pulses within the body. Now what we want to do here is the locust implant in the certain muscles that make these, uh, that causes the depression muscle so we can detect how frequent and how fast it's actually flapping its wings. Now this, what it does, it calculates how fast it's going, uh, the frequency, the speed, the which left or the right wing is beating faster than which, which sends its process to the motor complex here, which sends it the power to the wheels. And we can see how all the processes are working like that. And each wing separates. See, this one's moving faster than this one, this one's moving faster than this one, because it detects different pulses from each side of the, the body of the wing. Wheels. Now, as we see here, as it's moving, now the signal's being sent there, and as it stops. So when it starts moving, it detects the muscle signal going through there, and it starts driving like that. Sorry? Mapping the sensory input of the locust is That's nothing okay. new. Scientists have used wind tunnels to map flight patterns in the past, but this approach may yield more accurate results. <laughs> In order to drive the car, the locust must undergo surgery to implant the electrodes that will connect it to the vehicle. The locust's legs are taped in place to prevent it from ripping the electrodes off of its body. The electrodes are held in place using hot bikini wax. But don't worry, Dawson says. Although the locust can feel the heat from the wax, they never suffer during these surgeries. Insects don't feel pain, so when we do the surgeries to implant electrodes in their muscles, they're not under any sort of discomfort. We can actually remove the electrodes from the animals when we're finished an experiment and return the animal back to its, its cage, its colony downstairs, and it will happily live the rest of its, its life. So we're not destroying the animals for these experiments. And the biggest advantage to working with insects as opposed to vertebrates like um, uh, mice or, or rabbits or, or cats, for example, is that these... Uh, 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 the nervous systems and the muscle systems in insects actually aren't fundamentally different than the nervous and muscular systems in human beings. So by studying how the locust can use its muscles to control the car, we can gain some insights into how human beings might be able to use their muscles to control machines like prosthetic devices. For Catalyst, I'm Kate Boone.